Today on Knife Skills, we're going to talk about sutures. My name is Dr. Richard Hills, and I'm a trauma surgeon and general surgeon. And on my channel, Knife Skills, I like to talk about lifestyle, what it's like to be a surgeon, have some entertaining content. But I really also believe this channel at its core is education. So I thought we'd talk a little bit about sutures because it's a common question or a basic thing that most doctors need to know about. And I think a lot of people at home are kind of interested in how do we decide what kind of stitch to use and, and you know, what do we know or what, what do we understand works when it comes to stitches, sewing people up. So first of all, the term suture is really what we use to describe a stitch or a thread that a doctor would use to place in a patient. Sometimes sutures are placed deep down uh, internally when we're doing you know, abdominal operations or, or, or major surgeries. At the time, sutures, at least from what most people experience, is what they see at the skin level. So it's good to understand a little bit about you know, what are sutures and, and how do they work and, and how to make a decision as to what kind of search suture to use. So uh, I do actually have a few uh, stitches here the camera there so you can see that this is a, a brand called up uh, uh, well the, the brand name for this is proline okay um, it's a uh, Johnson & Johnson project their sub brand is uh, Ethicon and so I've pulled out a few of these uh, from the hospital so you can see essentially some of the different types of stitches that we have here I feel like it'd be great to do an unbox therapy uh, video maybe with something over top to show a little bit more about these, but I'll, I'll pull these out and you can see what they are um, as we go along. So when you think about stitches, probably the first thing to think about are how we categorize sutures. So typically we'll categorize sutures into, into two broad categories. The first category is the absorbable sutures. So those dissolve at some point over time and non-absorbable sutures or permanent sutures. So a few examples here. Um, so uh, this example that I have here is uh, the uh, monocryl. You'll typically notice that the uh, absorbable type like this will be in packaging where you can't see the needle inside because the concern is that the light and the environment really can actually break these down a little bit. They're a little more sensitive to the environment. Whereas you compare that to a, um, well, this is a silk, for example. This is a, a silk suture. Let's see if I can get a better lighting here. I find it hard to get that camera to focus right on it. Struggling a little bit with this particular packaging because it's reflected. There we go. We can get the silk there. Perfect. Silk is showing up. And this is a uh, considered a non-absorbable suture. Now I do think silk is actually a little bit interesting because it's considered non-absorbable. It's an organic. Um, but from my experience, I don't find silks in patients 10, 20 years out who've had surgery, who've definitely had silks before. Whereas we definitely will find proline sutures again, right there proline. And this is an example where you can actually see again, it's a little hard on this because it's actually just a fine suture with that lighting. but there is a, uh, uh, a stitch that you can visibly see there. Um, you will find prolines uh, in patients years later. So they, I would say silk is considered non-absorbable, but in practice, there may be a component of absorption to it. So those are the two categories. The other thing that we do is we break down stitches into monofilament and polyfilament stitches. So again, um, you're not going to be able to appreciate it, but the, uh, this is a silk, which is actually a braided uh, stitch or a polyfilament stitch. And uh, again, monocryl is the example I have here, uh, which is the essentially, again, once I said, the um, absorbable monofilaments. Prolines are also monofilament. And the uh, this is a, a four stitch I'm going to show uh, in a little bit. The ethicon or the uh, ethylon, I should say, which is a uh, nylon stitch that is... Uh, uh, non-absorbable uh, monofilament. So let me just pull it out here. Again, this is where I think a, an unbox therapy video would be perfect. It actually might help a little bit by being able to see the camera here. Really only zooming in is the way to 
get it, uh, get you to see, see that. So um, the first category is is absorbable versus non-absorbable. The second category is braided or polyfilament versus uh, monofilament. So why would you want to use one or the other? So lots of reasons. Uh, <laughs> and so sometimes when people ask, you know, why are you doing something? It's because of reasons. Um, essentially, we'll have our own reasons for, for using certain things. But essentially, some tissues over the long term do depend on the support of the stitch that you put in. Um, so in a good example, of this would be like a vascular anastomosis where you're uh, sewing a, let's say, a fabric conduit to a artery or vein. Those will be sewn almost certainly with a permanent non-absorbable stitch. And the reason why that is is because you're sewing soft tissue to a graft that's actually uh, synthetic. And so it's not the human body. That's one of the reasons why you'd want to use a permanent non-absorbable stitch. A, another uh, reason would be when you're stitching skin, absorbable stitches have more of an immune response. And so as a result, uh, you're going to need to use um, a non-absorbable stitch if you want to have the best cosmetic results. So typically you'll find people will use a non-absorbable stitch on the skin and they'll have those stitches removed in say a week or two, depending on where those tissues are. And that would be a good example of using a non-absorbable stitch. On the other hand, stitches that are within the soft tissue, stitches that are not holding a permanent implant like a mesh or a vascular anastomosis, those ideally would actually be uh, not would be absorbable. The reason why that would be is that whenever you put a foreign body into the human body, foreign material into the human body, there's a chance that bacteria could contaminate that and colonize that and be a permanent, what we say, nidus for an abscess. So we want to use an absorbable stitch when we're doing anything that's going to be under the skin or permanently uh, within the body, if you can. Another example would be when we're operating on the um, any kind of mucosa or any kind of um, epithelialized tract, hard to say that, epithelialized tract, like the urogenital tract, you're going to want to use absorbable stitches because, again, having a permanent stitch there can create an opportunity for things like stones to form, like I said, bacteria to colonize, those types of things. So those are the reasons why you'd use absorbable versus non-absorbable. And that's not actually a fully comprehensive list. Every surgeon and every specialty is going to have its own unique um, nuances there. So the next thing I would say that we teach, but may not be the most important next step, would be the size of the stitch. So this is actually where things get kind of interesting. So I'm going to show a couple of examples here. And I'm going to actually, so I'm going to take this uh, proline that I have here. I'm going to open up the proline. And I'm going to show you here again. I'm going to try to get the camera to see just how fine that needle is. Super difficult to get to focus on this. Let me try a little further back here. There we go. And I'll get it in. Super difficult. There we go. Slowly bring it up. You can almost barely see it in the package there. Just how fine that needle is. It's tiny. It's tiny. It's actually the right there. They're just a little, again, I'll get it focused on that. And there's a little, the ends is just right there. Let's compare that to a, the silk here. Again, I'm opening it up, showing you the package. Again, it's probably better here. Like so. Got it in the focus plane. I'll bring it in there and you see a much larger thread and needle. I'm going to show you a even larger stitch. So a couple things that are worth mentioning. So we have, this is a six O proline versus a, we have a six O proline here on the left again, versus an O silk on the right. Both of these, are absorb are permanent stitches, I should say. This one is a monofilament. This one is a 
braided stitch, okay? Now, the number is bigger, it seems anyway. It seems the number is bigger. 6O versus O. The actual numbering system is kind of strange. What this is is this six O's, six O's. So O, 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 and this is a single O. So we say we call this an O silk, and we call this a six O, so six O's proline. So the more O's you have, the smaller the stitch, and it goes on essentially to infinity. Reality is, is that 7080 are probably the smallest that you'll see. It's possible there are smaller ones. I might even look that up to see uh, if Ethicon makes something that's smaller than an 80, but uh, those will be the smallest that you'll likely ever encounter. They're, they're absolutely tiny. I would say a 60 is the smallest that I would ever work with, uh, and even then that's stretching. As a general surgeon, we tend to work with bigger needles who are dealing with bigger uh, problems, especially as a trauma surgeon. So those are O's. Now, sometimes it gets confusing because you can order a, a number one. So we say number one. So above O, they get bigger. And so we have a number one. So what I'm going to show you here is the, this is actually, again, we're going to try to get in the plane here. We see two. I'm going to bring that in there. A little hard to focus on that. Again, with, my, with this lighting, definitely going to try an unbox therapy video at some point uh, here style. Uh, so you can see it a little bit better. So there we go. There's a number two ethylon uh, stitch here is what we have. So it's number two. Now I'm going to open this up and you're going to see a couple unique things here about this. Okay. So first of all, the needle on that is absolutely massive. Okay. Absolutely massive needle. We do use this in trauma sometimes. And the purpose of that is to essentially hold uh, the skin and fascia in one bite. And again, we have like a, a quite a large, uh, thread here that goes along with that needle. So that's quite large. So that is considered a, a number two. And again, we'll compare that to a, O, which is a silk here. I'm just going to handle it with my hand here. Again, probably better to have a driver, uh, cause you can't injure yourself. Um, but again, uh, there's my needle here. You can kind of see it against my thread, uh, my my uh, uh, scrubs here a little bit, but it's a it's a, a smaller smaller needle. So the next step to think about is again the size. So how do you choose what size? So the the rule of thumb is that you want a stitch that is large enough, but no larger than what's required to overcome the internal tissue tension that you're sewing against. Now, what does that mean? Well, essentially what it means is that it won't break, okay? And you'll be able to get a good purchase. But in practice, usually what it means is it doesn't cut through, it doesn't tear through, because the tissues themselves might cut and might and might tear. Now the skin is great. The skin, the skin accepts stitches very, very well. St tissue, uh, skin almost never tears unless it's quite badly damaged. And so the, the skin will accept a stitch extremely well. So you can use quite fine stitches. So 405060 for skin, especially if you're dealing with a face is extremely appropriate. Now, when we're dealing with abdominal wall muscles, quote unquote fascia, we need bigger stitches because the risk of our stitches tearing through the tissues is much higher and you get a better purchase on those tissues with a wider, with a wider, uh, stitch. There's also an increased risk in abdominal wall of again that that stitch fracturing. So those are the those are the those are the reasons. The other actual practical reason, and it's probably something that's not emphasized enough, is that the needles that are available for stitches are different. So if you're dealing with a uh, again this six O, you're going to have only tiny tiny needles, and that's fine if you're dealing with uh, vascular anastomosis or you're doing some incredibly fine work, but there are times when you simply need to take a larger bite of tissues and you're going to want to choose the right needle. Now we could do a whole video and probably should on the different types of needles. So the needle that I have here on the silk that I pulled out is a CT one. So it's a, uh, relatively larger needle, uh, for, uh, you know, essentially an O O will come on a few other types of needles, uh, different angles. So the needle choice is extremely important and that'll have a bigger impact on your stitch. And in fact, I feel that oftentimes people will ask for a particular 
stitch. Oh, I need a, I need an O proline, or I need a, a two O or a three O. And really, what they really what they're really looking for is the particular needle. And so the hospital have a limited number of inventory. In fact, they'll have far fewer than what's available. There's so many different types of needle and stitch combinations, but typically people will be choosing the stitch, the thread based on what needle they want. So I, I do teach my residents to learn some of the different names of needles. There's a whole slew of them. You know, there's the MO needle, there's the RB needle, there's the CT needle, there's the um, SH needle, for example. Those are just a few, few examples. Um, right? Uh, this particular uh, needle, this was a BV needle. This one that I showed you here is an LR needle. So there's like so many different ones. And it's good to have a sense as to what the name of those needles are, because that will help you make a decision. At the end of the day, good surgical technique involves both incorporating that knowledge of what the right stitch is, what the right needle is, as well as the right technique at applying that stitch and needle to the tissue. And that's something that's worthwhile talking about on another video. So that is sutures in a nutshell. My name is Dr. Richard Hillsden. You've been watching Knife Skills. Thank you very much.